Hello everybody, Sanier, Engineer, MBA and Investor and in today's video, I want to talk about how I think right now in 2022, this is the tipping year, the tipping year for CRISPR. This is where CRISPR goes from being a technology that is very, very appreciated by the science community, by genomics companies, by biotech as a whole, to the next level, which means the average person, which means the average citizen, which means podcasters, which means going mainstream, right? I want to talk about all of this here in this video. So this is an article from the website from the individual called Peter Ataya. I think that's how you call his family name. I mean, I've, I've seen Peter with his own podcast episodes. He has his whole uh, episode about living longer, longevity, and so on. And of course, Peter went on different podcasters episodes like Tim Ferriss. Uh, Tim Ferriss is no joke, right? Tim Ferriss, I mean, a lot of people now in today's, uh, you know, in 2022 and I guess the past few years, I mean, people have been talking about Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan, and so on. Uh, in fact, Peter actually been on Joe Rogan a number of times. But uh, before Joe Rogan was a thing, it was all about Tim Ferriss, right? In the podcasting world, people may remember this in the 2013, 2014, 2015. It was all about Tim Ferriss. I mean, people, I think there was a point where people were just listening to Tim Ferriss because there weren't really that many podcasters. Uh, but Peter Ataya, he went um, numerous of time on Ferriss and he talks a lot about uh, living longer, healthier, and so on, him being a doctor himself. And what he did here in this article, this was published yesterday, is basically said, first case of human PSC SK9 genome editing, and basically talk about heart disease with CRISPR genome editing. Uh, I think that's amazing. Um, I think this is something that, I think this is how we get over the hump, right? This is how we get over the hump. And what I mean by over the hump, I mean, I've always thought that, you know, the year 2020, 2021, were more years of building up to this year, right? Um, in, 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 in theory, you know, in 2020, you had that book from Isaac, uh, Waltonson, you know, about genome editing, CRISPR, and Jennifer Doudna. Uh, in fact, even in late 2020, you had Emmanuel Charpentier and Doudna's uh, winning the Nobel Prize winners for the first time in history there. So that was amazing. You could make the argument that, you know, in 2020, we went sort of mainstream, but I don't think so. I don't think so. I think we were still in this space where it, unless you were really involved in biotech genomics or you're sort of invested in these ARK Invest companies or following the space, uh, you really don't know about CRISPR. You really don't know about genome editing. And even if you knew it was more like a fringe topic. And now what you see here is now you see these individuals like Peter, you see these individuals like in this space that are like, we're all about health. We're all about living longer. And you have this technology like CRISPR that can actually be a one-time treatment to many heart diseases, right? Which is what he's talking about over here. Uh, talking about the PCSK9 gene. Um, you know, there's a if there's a mutation there, basically you can get uh, irre irre irregularities in your cholesterol, uh, very low levels of LDLC. And then, you know, you want to address that with CRISPR, which he actually mentions it in this article. Uh, and of course, he talks about the potential risk and so on. There, there's definitely some ethics and morals behind it. But guys, look, are we going to be, you know, are we going to be putting morals and ethics over the potential of curing diseases, right? I mean, there's, it's, it's not a, a, you know, this is, this is one of the things. That, and I, by the way, I've said this in, you know, over the years here in this channel, anyways that it's not like we have years and years to play with. Every single day, there are people dying from these diseases, especially heart disease, which is the leading cause of death in America, in Canada, and many nations around the world. We don't really have that luxury, right? So when we have these companies like Verve Therapeutics, like CRISPR Therapeutics, work on these heart diseases, whether that's in vivo, ex vivo, it doesn't matter which type of CRISPR technology, base editing, CRISPR Cas9, it does not matter. What matters is you have these companies trying to tackle these diseases through phase one, phase two clinical trials. Uh, and we saw Verve Therapeutics, that was their first patient recently. And now what you see now is 
because heart disease is very close to people, right? Everybody knows what heart disease is. Everybody knows at least one person in their lifetime that has had a heart attack. This is something near and dear to Americans. Uh, and now you he, have people that are, are looking to space saying, okay, so now a company called Vert Therapeutics just dose their first patient and we're looking for that. I mean, this is where we're going over the hump. This is where we're going mainstream. I, I truly believe by the end of this year and as we enter 2023, again, we're basically in the month of August. We have a couple of months left for this year. As we enter in, uh, the year 2023, I truly believe this is where CRISPR emerges himself, itself has something that people can't ignore anymore. The same way as TCP, IP, and internet, the technology was almost um, not possible to ignore. Uh, it was just no longer possible to ignore it by the end of 90s and early 2000s. It's the same concept of CRISPR. I think it's gonna, not gonna be possible for you to ignore by the, the year 2023 as we enter that year. I truly believe that because you'll have the FDA submissions for CRISPR Therapeutics and uh, Vertex CTX001 or Hexacell. You have more patients dosed for companies like Vert Therapeutics. You'll have data, additional data from NTLA 2001, NTLA 2002. You'll have more data from Caribou Sciences from their CAR T cells program for CBO10. Uh, you'll potentially have data uh, from Verve Therapeutics and you'll potentially have those patients from Beam Therapeutics. who will see what happens with that with their Beam 101 program tackling sickle cell disease. But the point is, I truly believe this is the year. I truly believe 2023 will be a, uh, uh, you can't go back from there. Right when you see these individuals that are really known in the space, in the health space, uh, talking about this, talking about raising these issues, raising these technologies, you can't go back on that. This is a compounding effect, and you'll have more and more individuals that are going to be watching this channel. For example, going in communities like Reddit and uh, Twitter. I truly believe that this is this is the tipping point. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you guys think about this. Hopefully you guys are having a beautiful Sunday here. Thank you so much for watching. Like this video, fan value, subscribe if you're not. And I'll see you guys uh, in, uh, on Monday. Hopefully we have a beautiful week there. Thank you.